my perspective in advocating for um, objective, uh, the objective sex education bill um, is informed from two strands of my work. One is, is research with third level students and the other is, is work facilitating a sexual health module with second level students um, at the alma mater of, of Richie Sadler that we're piloting um, at the moment. And I suppose um, my, my work with, with third level students has really reinforced um, for me the importance of providing um, a comprehensive rights-based sex ed at second level for students. And one particular quotation from um, interview work that I've done with students at third level really, really resonated with me. Um, and I, I think it represents the experience of people um, at third level, their sex ed, um, up, up until they, they, they arrive at, at third level education and it's I think that education at the point has failed us because we haven't had enough information and I know people who have had sex and years later have regretted that they that they've had it and I think a large part of it is due not to being actually getting proper instruction so I think that's really really telling that in in 2018 we have students um, having sexual encounters and involved in sexual situations that they regret and that they attribute that to the fact that they didn't have, they weren't equipped perhaps with the, with the tools to effectively and confidently communicate consent. So, so for me, it, it's really, really important that we roll back right to the first year and from first year through to fifth year, really, really equip them, firstly with the confidence, I think, um, and, and to understand gender roles, their roles, um, to understand respect, to understand boundaries, so that when they get to third level, they're not in involving themselves in situations that may be potentially harmful or regretful for them. That's great. Thanks a million. Elaine, next up we have Damien Green from you inside. <coughs> Thank you. Um, uh, we at the Union of Students of Ireland are delighted to support this bill. Um, it's something that's sorely needed. Um, I want to speak especially about consent that's mentioned in the bill. Um, we have a lot of students who are forming maybe new relationships when they get into their colleges or into their um, higher level institutions and they don't have the vocabulary, they don't have the knowledge on how to communicate what they want to um, and what they feel comfortable with and that's effectively what this bill is. Um, consent is all about good communication um, which I think we can all support. Um, we did a survey back in 2013 um, to kind of give ourselves a bit of a grounding, to give ourselves the basis of what we should be campaigning for. Um, it was called the Say Something Survey, and some of the stats that were highlighted from that were 11% of women, or sorry, 16% of students affected were affected once they started in university or in their higher level institution, um, regardless of what had happened at a younger age. Um, this is women and men of people of all genders. Um, what's even more shocking is only 3% of students reported it. So not only are these issues happening, but then these issues aren't being brought to proper authorities, such as the Guardi, such as the counselling service, such as an SU. Um, so that just shows the lack of information from students in the Act, and then students, of if it's a crime, if it's um, something they should be validated by, is this something that's important to bring to an authority? Um, we've been working a lot recently with the National Women's Council of Ireland and we're very proud to be working with them um, on a project ESHTA which is for, stands for Ending Sexual, um, Se Sexual Health I Violence in Third Level Education and we are basically trying to tackle um, consent work is ruled out to all the students that we can be helping. Um, without this bill and without putting resources, and resources into consent um, it's dangerous, it's negligent, um, there's huge positives to come from this bill, um, but at the same time by ignoring this, uh, we are endangering our students and we really need to be standing up for them. That's great, thanks a lot Damien. Uh, next up we have Jane Donnelly who is the Human Rights Officer of Atheist Ireland. Atheist Ireland supports Solidarity's provision, provision of objective sex education bill. We ask the Taoiseach to provide the money message that will allow it to make it through the door. With or without a money message for this bill, there will be broadly similar costs to revising the curriculum and training teachers. But without a money message for this bill, those costs will be wasted on curriculum changes that will be delivered through a religious ethos because most of the schools in Ireland have a religious ethos. Atheist Ireland has campaigned for years both in Ireland and at the United Nations for the objective sex education without a religious ethos 
in Irish schools. The Minister for Education recently acknowledged in the Dáil that students have a right to factual information about sexual matters. But if it is to be effective, that content must also be delivered in an objective, critical and pluralistic ma manner without a religious ethos. To do this, TDs will have to amend the law, as proposed by this bill, because the NCCA has no legal power over how schools patrons with a religious ethos deliver the curriculum. Irish schools consistently breach the rights of atheist minority faith and even many Catholic pupils, parents and teachers. The Irish government has been repeatedly told this by the United Nations, the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission and the Ombudsman for Children. The abortion referendum has changed everything. TDs can no longer assume that even most Roman Catholic parents want Catholic sex education for their children. Also, even if most parents in a particular area did want Catholic sex education for their children in the only local publicly funded school, that is still not a reason to deny the rights of the rest of the school community. We have moved beyond the time for fine-tuning the religious discrimination and privilege in our schools. We now need to move towards a secular, human rights-based school system that treats everybody equally. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Jane. Okay, just a word from me. Um, we know all the evidence shows that the sex education that is delivered to young people is really in the dark ages. There are really honourable exceptions to that, like those who are lucky enough to receive sex education from Elaine and, and Richie, um, but that's really a small minority. The sex education that is received is extremely uneven and in the whole is completely unsatisfactory. Um, the uh, students union, School Students Union of Ireland uh, did a study about this, they surveyed students, they found, I mean there's many, many different figures which are completely damning, but the headline figure is that almost 50% of students rated their sex education 1 out of 5, another 25% of it rated it 2 out of 5, so seeing it as you know, completely uh, unacceptable. And that has a real impact on young people, it has an impact on young people in school, it has an impact on LGBTQ plus young people who are raised, whose experiences don't exist, who are therefore much more likely to experience bullying, impacts on their mental health, etc. Um, and has an impact on everyone afterwards who then you know, is going to be engaged in sexual encounters and hasn't been armed with the kind of education that they need in terms of uh, consent. Um, and the government even acknowledges that now, they acknowledge the need for objective sex education as recommended by the Citizens' Assembly, as recommended by the Oireachtas Committee on the Eighth uh, Amendment. But their reaction to it is fundamentally dishonest, um, it's fundamentally disingenuous. We had a press conference last Wednesday featuring LGBTQ plus organisations and people in particular, uh, given the week of Pride. After that I went and did leaders' questions with Varadkar on this. And his answer was, oh yeah, we need a change, but the change will be provided in a change of curriculum. What are you doing trying to legislate for uh, a curriculum? And um, just to be really clear and, and honest, like what's our bill is available publicly, people should read it. The outlines of what the curriculum should be is simply to say the curriculum includes the following areas in a factual and objective manner. One, consent to sexual activity, two, the different types of sexuality, three, the different types of gender, four, methods of contraception, and five, determination of pregnancy. We're, we're not seeking to write a curriculum in legislation. We're seeking to provide, as is provided for other curriculums, broad outlines of what a progressive, objective, factual sex education curriculum would look like. But the key aspect of the bill is contained in sections two and three, and that's what he wants to ignore, which is exactly doing, as, as Jane explained, is dealing with the religious ethos exemption, which it's just a fact that you could have the best curriculum in the world on sex education and schools would not be obliged to deliver it. Regardless of what Leo Varadkar says, that's a fact because it's contained in law, because if it goes against the characteristic spirit of the school, they won't, they won't have to teach it or will teach it in a way that they want. And that's what's currently happening. Religious ethos is standing in the way of students' right to have objective sex education. The 
th there's a whole number of documents like, like this one, which is uh, guidelines on relationships and sexuality education from the Irish Catholics Bishops Conference. And it says things like this, which are all the way through it. The Catholic school in the formulation of its policy should reflect Catholic moral teaching on sexual matters. Even more fundamentally, it needs to be specific in excluding approaches which are inconsistent with the very foundations and formulations of Catholic moral thought. That's the, the thinking that means young people don't get the sex education on all aspects of relationships and sexuality that they, that they need. Um, the final point is just to explain where, where this is at, which Jane has already done actually, uh, which is that this, this past second stage, the Dáil voted for this, nobody voted against this. No, the government or Fianna Fáil didn't have the courage to say no, we don't actually stand for getting rid of this religious uh, ethos, effective exemption for sex education. Um, so they all voted for it under public pressure, but now what the government is engaged in is a very undemocratic manoeuvre that they've used multiple times now to block the medicinal cannabis bill, to block uh, the bill which would ban single-use non-compostable cups, to block a, a number of pe progressive pieces of legislation, and that is to simply refuse to provide the money message which is necessary to go on to the next stage, which is committee stage. The Count Corla wrote to um, the chair of the Committee on Education and Skills and the government now three weeks ago. They said that the government would be was given w was was asked for an initial indication to be given within three weeks as to whether a message will be provided. Um, that three weeks finished yesterday. We still have no indication from the government. They don't even have to say no. <laughs> they just don't say anything, and in that way, don't allow it to proceed. And it's clear they just want this to die. Like they want the, all the other bills to die. They want just public attention to go away. It's if they voted against, they know they'd suffer public, you know, opprobrium and pressure and so on. So they just want it to die. But we've got a message for Leo Varadkar and a huge range of organisations support this bill that we're not going to go away. That we're going to continue to demand that we get objective sex education that people need. Uh, and that means we're going to continue to dem demand primary legislation because it's the only way uh, to, to have it. So the campaign of pressure, which saw a protest yesterday outside the Dáil, saw the excellent um, sexual consent uh, seminar today inside the Dáil, is going to continue in a whole number of guises until they, they as um, uh, as someone said last, last week, until Varadkar puts his money message where his mouth is. Mm -hmm.